It is time for Around the 412 with Smitty and Tyler. Welcome back to another episode of Around the 412. I'm Tyler. With me, as always, is my co-host, Smitty. Go follow us on all of our social medias at Around the 412. Also, go subscribe to us over on YouTube if you're not watching there over already. Also, follow us wherever you're listening to this podcast. If you're not watching on YouTube, whether that's Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or any other place that you find your podcast, I promise you, we are there. If you want to go check out some of the links that we have in the description, the top link from now until Christmas time is going to be year six. Yeah, actually, no, excuse me, year seven. We've done this for six years now of rocking around the 412. It's our Christmas fundraiser that with the help of everybody who has donated and shared this message over the past six years, we've been able to raise over $32,000 and help provide children around the 724-412 local Pittsburgh area codes. And it's awesome. We want to keep doing this. We're going to keep pushing this message. We've raised over $600 this year so far. We want to continue to do that. We re- set our goal as $10,000 each year, but realistically, we're just trying to get as much as we possibly can so that way we can provide Christmas for as many children as possible this year. So if you want to be interested in that, want to read about it, it's the top link over on YouTube and the listening platform. So wherever you find the show, it's down there. So go check it out. On a much more serious note, I do not know if I have ever felt this bad or worse a week after, or I guess a week and a half after a trade deadline for the Pirates than I have right now. Mainly because this is the oft, oft, often not seen where they're actually buying. They bought. And mm-hmm. somehow they're just losing games. And I don't think I've ever felt as bad in recent memory that I can think of about a baseball team after a trade deadline where they bought than I do about the Pirates right now. And honestly, if you compare it to the off seasons where they've sold some players, I probably felt better then than I do right now about what the Pittsburgh Pirates are doing, who they're losing games to, how they're losing these games. I mean, I just feel awful about this team right now. I did, I did not think a week ago when we were recording our show, and listen, I know that it was going to be a tough gauntlet coming up because you had the Padres and you had the Diamondbacks, who you just played recently with the Diamondbacks. You're playing the Padres again next week, along with the Dodgers this upcoming weekend, so it's not getting any easier for you. You knew the task that was ahead, and they are just falling flat every single time. What? How did they get worse? How are they performing worse by getting better? That makes no sense to me. I I think to your point about like post trade deadline, I think the difference is because at least at that time, what they did aligned with the direction they were going. Like if you sell off players, you kind of have yourself prepared for what's going to happen from that point on for the rest of the season. In this case, we thought that this, you know, commitment at least to adding to this roster as opposed to subtracting from this roster, other than obviously in the form of, of Quinn Priest or a little bit with a, a baseball trade uh, and Martin Perez dumping that salary. Um, but largely they added to this group. That is the statement of we're trying to go for it. And then you look at the what they've done since the trade deadline on the field. Honestly, man, what what it comes back to for me is what was we figured preseason was going to be a strength. Then the season started and it was a anchor against in in a bad way, pulling this team down. Then it became a strength. And then once again, it's been their downfall. That's the bullpen. Look at what the bullpen has done. The back end of this bullpen. We're not even talking about guys that are like, you know, the Hunter Stratton's of the world that are dooming this team. We're talking about Colin Holderman and David Bednar. Look at what those two by themselves, their performances alone have done to this team since the last time we recorded. They're responsible for what? Four or five losses over the course of that time, just within those two. Um, I'm not going to say the offense has been on fire, but they've done more than they were doing before. Like they have actually provided some run support as of late. And now it's the bullpen that is bringing this team down and costing them games. It, it, this is a cursed franchise. That's what it is. The ultimate, like, I don't know how else to say it. This is a cursed franchise. We're not allowed to have good things as Pittsburgh Pirate fans. One way or another, we will be brought back down to earth if things are going well. We got Paul Skeens. Great. Look at how things were going for a little bit there. 
then Jared Jones gets hurt. Those two can't be on the same rotation for that long because this is a cursed franchise. And then look at what has to happen because we decided to buy the trade deadline. Nope, can't have that either. The bullpen now has to fall apart in these games that we're actually being competitive in. Look at the way that the offense picked up Luis Ortiz last Friday night. To climb all the way back to the point where they actually had a lead. And Arotis Chapman, who's been solid, actually, out of the bullpen. That home run he gave up to Josh, Pe Josh Bell, 103 on the black. Are you kidding me? Like, this team is just not meant to be good. I, this is the time of year in August where typically we check out, become casual fans. I'm telling you right now, I'm pretty much done for the season. That's like I'm still going to pay attention. I'm going to watch every pitch Paul Steen's thrones. I'll tell you that. And when Jared Jones comes back, I'm excited to watch him too. Same with Mitch Keller. So I guess I'll be watching for the starting pitching because I don't give a crap about what the team is doing on the field right now. They've lost me over this last week. It's hard to argue with you. Uh, it's it's really tough because a week and a half ago, seeing what they were doing at the deadline, I was excited. I thought they were improving this team. And I thought that while the bullpen had its struggles offensively, that was clearly the issue, and that was the issue that management wanted to fix. But now, after this week and a half of games, we lose five out of the last six. Two other wild card potential opponents that we're fighting with spots against. Why did they not target another arm? That's probably my main question. Why? Why would they not for look the bullpen? For some for for the bullpen. They, I don't. Yeah. They could roll with their starters for the rest of the year. I understand mm -hmm. you in the long run. You probably want to get better on the back end of your rotation, but you could live with it for this year. Why did you not add another arm in the bullpen when it has been a Achilles heel for you all season long? And whenever the, that's the thing, whenever the trade deadline happened, I didn't really think about it too much. Like I thought they could have gotten an arm, but I was happy with what they did getting IKF, getting Brian De La Cruz, who's been struggling. We, you, you just mentioned before we started recording, he's batting point zero eight seven over the last week. Really good there. <laughs> yeah, they they should have added an arm. And hindsight is twenty twenty, so that's obvious to say right now. But you could have said it a week and a half ago too that they should have added an arm. Looking at what the bullpen's history has been this entire season, they they've had some good spots, they've had some good arms, but overall this season the bullpen has been a massive disappointment. And quite frankly, the main reason we are not sitting on a wild card spot right now. Say anything about the offense you want. Your starting pitching has put you in enough situations where as long as your bullpen can shut it down, you are going to win these games, even if your offense is, doesn't score more run support. And we talked about that early on in the season, that the bullpen is quite literally blowing games and blowing their season away you're seeing that happen and unfold over the last week i mean look some of these guys were the last week the last seven days in their stats colin holderman blew three games by himself so he is by far the worst one to point at but colin holderman in three innings of work in three games he had five hits against he let up seven runs six of them were earned and he walked three guys. David Bednar, who should be a strength of our bullpen, in two and a th in two thirds innings pitched in three games, let up five hits, five earned runs, and he walked four guys. I mean, that that's that's just looking at a couple of the guys. And I'm 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 not even going to nitpick more players, but those are the two really big outliers of everyone else. Also, oh, Dennis Santana as well, giving up four runs in the last week too. So that's another one. Hi, I mean, I'm looking at these guys' ERAs. Like Colin Holderman's ERA over the last seven days is 18 right now. So, yeah. I mean, he, he's it, just awful. It was under two for the longest time. I think he'd be lucky to keep it under five now by season's end. I mean, on this year to date, Colin Holderman, let me find him real quick. Actually, for the uh, longest time, it was like 0. 0.6. Yeah, his ERA is up to 3.43 on the season. Yeah, that may I mean, not sound like big, but that's a huge jump from where it was, and it, mm -hmm. it's it's just amazing to me that they did not add to the bullpen. And it's amazing to me that that ignorance of not adding to your bullpen and trying to improve it is the reason that you've lost games this week. There is at least four games that you can look at and say the bullpen lost you these games out of this stretch that we had against the Diamondbacks and the Padres.
And now, mm-hmm. if you're the Pirates, you're looking at yourselves and you're sitting four and a half back out of a wild card right now. And you're wondering, with still over a month and a half left, is this enough time to be able to overcome this? Are we going to be able to pull enough games and pull, and string together series of wins to be able to overcome the hole that we've driven ourselves in? Because we were we were half game out of a wild card spot. We were tied with the last wild card. And now you've really thrown yourself into a hole. I don't see them getting out of it and looking at the games they have coming up. I don't think it's going to be easy for them to even win a series over the next couple weeks. I think it's amazing how terrible I feel about this team right now because of what they've done in the last week and a half. It's these last two series specifically. And if you want to extend it back to the series they had against the Diamondbacks, not, not, and I mean, Houston was in there and they won that series. But if you want to extend it back to that Diamondback series before the trade deadline and then include these last two series against the Diamondbacks and the Padres, I don't think I've ever felt worse about the Pirates from buying a team or buying at the trade deadline to now than I have in honestly years because I, I they never did Chris this Archer. when they bought before. Chris Archer, yes. <laughs> Chris Archer, yeah. that, that year was interesting. Mm-hmm. because you had that 11-game win streak, which yeah. was honestly the worst thing that could have happened for that 2018 team. What's weird is they just made that... I'd have to go back, but they didn't make any other like deals really to improve the MLB roster besides that, though, right? Like, it was no, just like, I don't think we're so. making this one move. <laughs> like, I don't know and it, was the, it was the only move that was talked about, too. Yeah, That was the only thing that was being talked about by Pirates fans was Chris Archer coming... And I were we at, I know I was at his debut. Did you do come with me? I don't I don't even remember mm-hmm. that. No, but no, I remember watching him. I was at his debut, and yeah, that eleven game win streak in twenty eighteen was probably the worst thing that could have happened for the franchise for several years because of the trade that they made. It basically forced their hand to be like, Well, we can't really sell right now because of what we're doing, but we kind of have to buy. But I that twenty eighteen team, I did not feel the same way about oh, that wait, team no, no, that no. I did. I lied. There was they, they actually did make another significant move. That was uh, when they traded friend of the show Taylor Hearn for Keone Kella. Oh, that's true. I forgot about that happening. Man, that mm-hmm. was that was such a long time ago. Um, but the, the the difference between that 2018 team and the team now is I feel I felt way better about this current team, mainly because of the starting pitching that you do have than mm-hmm. I ever did about that 2018 team, despite them being a winning team that season. But right now, yeah, it's it's almost like if you're if your starting pitcher doesn't make it at least seven innings and give up one to two runs, and the offense doesn't score at least three, four, five runs, your bullpen is going to blow it somehow. That's how I feel right now. I just don't feel comfortable sending anybody out there, and that's why. As much as the blame can be on Derek Shelton for a lot of things that have happened, and I do think that there's blame to go around for him, what is yeah. he supposed to do with the bullpen? Like, who is he supposed to That's, feel comfortable said, sending uh, out there? I put on Twitter today, um, don't get me wrong, I'm not a fan of Derek Shelton, but it's hard to press a right button when pretty much all of the br- the buttons are broken. Like, yeah. You know, what, what What are you supposed to do when you got maybe one guy right now that's been effective out of the pen? His bench is dog water. I mean, there's not much to work with on the roster right now. Like, it's hard to put out a lineup that seven through nine isn't black holes. So I, I don't know. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do not think Derek Shelton is the manager to get this team to the next level. But I also don't think that Ben Sherrington is the GM to construct a roster that's going to be able to get to the next level either. Maybe he can pluck some players from the Washington Wild Things. Tyler, why have we not brought this up yet? We're only a couple weeks away. That's true. August 22nd, you and I will be throwing out a first pitch Washington Wild Things versus the Joliet Slammers 705 first pitch, but make sure you get there early. We'll be throwing out the first pitch. $1 Coors Lights. I'll throw a link in the description of the show as well because we can get you guys some free tickets, but very excited for that to take place. They got us up in a suite. For that game, very excited for it. Uh, Thirsty Thursday, that's why they're doing the $1 Coors Lights to do college nights like every Thursday. So it should be a pretty rowdy crowd, and I'm excited to be part of the atmosphere. 
Yeah, I'm excited about that. I get to come home back to Pittsburgh, go to go to the Wild Things game. I remember going to a Wild Things game in elementary school too. Haven't been there in probably like a, like 20 years. So I've it's going to be to, you, really you never been to one. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I honestly can't even remember it, but I remember my elementary school. I I think I was in like third or fourth grade. Went to a Wild Things game, but yeah, it's going to be sweet. Being able to throw out a first pitch, I think it's going to be cool. Yeah, you I, you know a lot of people are gonna be like, who in the world? Yeah, are you guys? although I put it out on uh, I put it out on social media just a little bit before we started recording. We're getting pretty good reception to this. Maybe a lot of people uh, that see it from our social media are gonna get on get on board now and show up and show out. We hope so. We know friends of the show, John Sargis and Joe Frick, they'll definitely be there. We hope to see a lot of you guys there as well joining in on the party. Um, I was just making a joke. That was a really bad segue, but I had to get away to throw in. Uh, that we will be doing that again August 22nd. I'll make sure to throw the link in the description because you guys can get some free tickets uh, for the game there as well. Um, I'll tell you what, like if we're looking for positives right now, though, IKF, I feel like since he's come over, I like the way that he looks. I do like the fact that they got a year of control beyond this year with him as well. Um, I mean, unless Brian De La Cruz turns it around, I don't know that three extra years of control is something you want necessarily. (laughs) The years of control is only a good thing if the player is good. Um, He's going to stabilize. I mean, he is what he is as a player. I think that's the thing is like probably a lot of people felt like he was a better player than what he is. Um. I'm not saying this is what he is as a player either, but he is going to strike out a lot. Uh, He'll hit some homers and probably be a little bit below average, both at the plate and in the field. Like this is, we're getting what I expected as a player. I feel like slightly less right now, but ultimately I think he's going to stabilize and be the exact same player that I expected we were getting. But IKF, I don't know. Maybe we got a little bit of a game changer. What's going on, everybody? Smitty from around the 412, and I just want to take a quick second to give a shout out to our folks at Game Changers. Their logo on the screen right now, right above my microphone. Uh, over 2,000 different designs in their catalog. Luxury heavyweight material. I am wearing one of their shirts right now. Best vintage t-shirts in the game. Head over to GameChanger.LA or Pick6.LA to pick up some shirts. And guess what? Use code AT412. Save yourself $10 on your order Every single time. Again, gamechanger.la or pick6.la. Best vintage t shirts in the game. Check them out. I was wearing one of their t shirts then. I'm wearing one of them right now. Very different vibe here, though. Post Malone. Yeah, they do music and movies and stuff like that. Tease as well on their site. So be sure to go check them out again. Code AT412 saves yourselves $10 at checkout. And people have been hitting that up. Like, I don't even know when people use it. I find out at the beginning of the month when Game Changers reaches out to me about how many we sold, but people have been using the codes, so we appreciate you doing that. Uh, And with the Steelers preseason starting tomorrow, I know this isn't the Steelers show, but go check out a Steelers. They only have like four Pirates designs, but they have a bunch of Steelers ones. Know a lot of people are on the Justin Fields train right now. He's going to be the starting quarterback uh, during the preseason game, so be sure to check that out. Um, Speaking of the Pirates tees, in yes. my head, I did not know. Whenever it first came out, I did not know why Game Changer because I my head did not compute that Game Changers was the name of the site. So on the Paul Skeen shirt, when mm. it said Game Changer yeah. at the bottom, I was like, he's played like one game. Why is this on here? But it, 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 and then I put two two together like a week ago. I'm I mean, not even joking. Even without. I, I, I know I get it. I get it. But I was like, yeah. I just thought, oh, that's funny to put on there. And then I realized the site, oh, wait, they're called Game Changers. This you notice so like how... Now. On it, pretty much every design, too, there's like a, a trading card look as well, yeah. like kind of in there as well. It says Game Changer on like the border of the card as well. I don't know. I love their designs. I was a huge fan before we even uh, started partnering up with them. So be sure to check them out. Uh, you want to feel sure. sad for a second? I, I saw, mean, a, pirate I saw show, a picture. Though. Yeah. So, I mean, this is actually going <laughs> to fit in. This is something to make you feel sad about the Pirates. In 2013, the top five ERAs on the team mm. were all out of the bullpen and it was what a what a vin mazzaro had a 2.81 jason grilly 2.7 tony watson 2.39 justin wilson 2.08 and mark melanson had a 1.39 for 2013 oh you know who you who you didn't say in there that i thought you would is jared hughes no i looked and jared hughes actually was not in the top okay 12 Oh, so geez. But I think was Jared Hughes more prevalent in 14 and 15 than he was in 13? Maybe that's possible. 
Jared Hughes, that tw- that that is what I wish we had right now. If you could take the bullpen from those thirteen to fifteen years and mix it with the starting pitching we have right now, it would be nasty because in those years, it was the opposite for most of our star or some of our starters. Where mm-hmm. like like if every time we threw Jeff Locke out there, it was like hoping we could just get to the bullpen because they would just shut down the game. If we could get to six seven innings. And you got to go Jared Hughes, Tony Watson, Mark Melanson to close out a game. It, it was just absolutely nasty how how easy it was. Like we we would go to games, and this was before we even were going to games together. This is just whenever we didn't even know each other yet. But like pirate fans were going to games, and if they got to the seventh inning and we went to, went into our bullpen, the game was over. We weren't going to lose. Mm-hmm. I just I wish I had that feeling now. But now it's it it is literally butterflies in my stomach anytime a bullpen we have to go to the bullpen and somebody steps on the mound. It's I don't know what to expect from them, and they're just so disappointing. And I think this is not only on Ben Sherrington. I've mean, I've talked about it a ton in for the trade deadline, but also in the off season. Didn't really do anything to improve the bullpen outside of what you brought in Araldus Chapman which is fine, but at the same time, and I know there's some things that hurt, like m- losing Dowry Moreta for the year definitely hurt yeah. the bullpen. And still but, haven't seen Ryan Barucki. Yeah, but there's still, th- you could have improved it somehow. And so yeah. this offseason is just as much to blame for Ben Sherrington than what he did at the trade deadline in terms of what he's doing to improve the bullpen. It's mm-hmm. it's It's mind-blowing to me that this is how we are going to go down this year. Is and it, honestly, it is the curse. We are cursed. It is ironic that the strength of our preseason thoughts is the reason we are going to be missing the postseason. In the work, we man, right before the season started, what were we worried the most about in terms of the Pittsburgh Pirates? The starting pitching, because we had no clue what Jared Jones would be. We didn't know when we would see Paul Steens. Thought Bailey Falter didn't belong in a rotation. The way that Mitch Teller's second half went last year compared to his first half. I mean, there were question marks to look. Actually, don't get me wrong. I would have thought Mitch Keller would have been better than him. But Martin Perez was probably the one guy I would have felt like I know what we're getting. Like, I don't think it's necessarily. I would have thought this is a guy that you can slot in as a three or four. And I know that he will be fine in that role. Like the variance. Is, has just been crazy from this group. I don't. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm pretty much checked out. But here, here's the one thing. I know I probably should have used him as the segue because I will give. You know, I mean, he fell into his laps. So I don't know how much credit to give Ben Sherrington on this one, but for a guy that hasn't been able to find hitters, uh, especially at this position, to be able to do so, man, what a find Joey Bart has been. Like, where are the Pirates right now if Joey Bart isn't part of this roster and? I mean, I get it. Like, I, I still have hope for Henry Davis. I have not given up on him. But, and, and you got Andy Rodriguez coming back next year, and I get that. But with the athlete that he is, I feel like you can maybe find a different role for him. I know he's been taking some grounders at first base. That's like the first step of him working his way back is doing that. How, how do you not have Joey Bart as your starting catcher going into 2025? I think you have to. Um, based off of the performance that he's had since being DFA'd by – the Giants. I mean, th- that's another thing, too, is that this is a guy that was DFA'd by a different team. It's not like we made a trade for him. Just basically taking a chance on a guy that was low risk and turned out to be a high reward right now. I mean, looking at what he's done the past week, he's batting 316. He's got five RBIs in the week. He's part of the reason that they're staying competitive-ish in some of these games. They don't end up winning these games. But he's been one of the better spots of the lineup. In and in, in a lineup that we've had so much to talk about in the negative light. He's one of the ones that, for the better part of a summer, has been good. And that has been a great find and a great move by Sherrington to bring him in on, like I said, low low risk, high reward. It's a guy that's DFA'd. You literally are bringing him in for nothing. And the fact that they get him like that, I think that I agree with you. He is going to be or should be basically your incumbent starting pitcher going into the next season because i mean let's face it if people want to say endy 
Indy had what half a season or a few months of a season last year to to get his feet wet in the MLB. I mm-hmm. I think that we probably should pump the brakes a little bit on people thinking that he's just going to come in and being the starting catcher and everything is fine and dandy at the position. I'm I'm fine with Andy Rodriguez being a backup catcher and maybe even experimenting with other positions, like you said, with first base. But I think that Joey Bart has proved himself enough what from what he's done this season with the Pirates to earn that like incumbency for being the starting catcher next season. And a lot of guys this week have been good offensively. We were I was mentioning it to you before we hit the record button. Like Joey Bart averaging 316 this week. Andrew McCutching is averaging 400. Brian Reynolds 333. Brian Reynolds is the only Brian person. Reynolds. He's the we only person that so it doesn't matter. Brian Reynolds. Yeah. It does not matter what situation the game is, whether the Pirates are winning, losing, high pressure situation or if it's just an every other at bat. He's the only one that I do not worry in any situation about what he's going to do at the plate because he's so clutch and he comes through for this team so many times in his career, but also just this year alone, he's come through for this team a ton, but Brian Reynolds batting 333, O'Neill Cruz 474 over the last week, been really good. He has Monty Grandal in, in his two games also playing. And last week I didn't mention it, but I believe it was the game against the Diamondbacks, not this past, series but the one before that was in arizona the one where they actually won so they didn't get swept i I don't think i've seen the asmani grandal care more about winning baseball in that moment than i have the entire season like he was fired up and actually showed like he wanted to win which i had to give him credit for and i forgot to mention it last week so i want to mention it Mm -hmm. this week and even cabrian yeah yeah, mention it now once the season's pretty much over Yeah, yeah yeah Cabrian Hayes batting 368 over the last five mm-hmm. games that he's yeah we in. found the solution for him. He needs to hit the ball worse, not make as good as contact, because he drops more hits in that way. Like instead of just absolutely crushing the ball into the ground 110 miles per hour, just flare him into right field. And then also Rowdy Rowdy Teles still continuing to bat well 333 over the last week, but then you have guys like Jared Triolo. His batting average over the last five games is literally zero. Michael A. Taylor, his batting average, and that's somebody that we talked about, if he could turn it around offensively and showed like he did in Houston and Arizona, maybe this is a guy that could be an everyday center fielder for this team into a potential playoff push. That's clearly not happening over the last seven games or six games. Batting 0.71, absolutely great. Connor (laughs) Joe batting 125. Uh, Brian De La Cruz, like you mentioned, is batting 0.087. Dewan Bay batting 200. I mean, the, some of the lineups are literally split in half between batting one through four, or one, one through five, and then batters five through nine. Of mm-hmm. this is our potential to get runs, and this is going to be very quick innings. That's how I view some of these lineups sometimes because. The top of the lineup has been hitting. The bottom of the lineup, they can't hit a pinata. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. I mean, there's so many guys on here that I just feel like any other team, they're not making the cut. Smitty from around the 412 here. And while I may not have much hair, the hair that I do have will not be cut by anybody besides Keith at Keith's Barbershop. My friend Christian Circle, been with us since day one. Keith's Barbershop, located 401 Burkitch Way, Suite 2 in Beaver, PA. Download the app The Cut, book an appointment with Christian today, or you can do walk-in with Tony or Ashley. But again, Keith's Barbershop, 401 Burkitch Way, Suite 2 in Beaver, PA. Go check them out. Old school vibe in there. Absolutely love it. Cannot recommend them enough. Wouldn't go anywhere else. Maybe I'll see you there. There we go. Keats Barbershop. Check it out. Um, yeah, where were we? Oh, yeah. The bottom of the lineup. Stinks. The bullpen. Stinks. I don't know. Sherrington said his work cut out for him this offseason because I feel like this rotation deserves to. And there's some pieces on in the everyday lineup yeah. to build around. But, man. There, there's not enough. Like, is there? Do you think that one off season is enough to improve everything they need to improve? 
Uh, no, no, I do not because you're you have too much to improve. It's not like we're one arm away or one bat away. We are half of an offensive lineup away, and we are most of the bullpen away. Like you get good performances here and there out of the bullpen, but ultimately you could all almost replace most of the arms in that bullpen. And you wouldn't really get much of an argument from people. I I think that this off season is very crucial for Ben Sherrington, not only to improve the team, but if he wants to keep his job, um, I don't know how serious it is from Bob Nutting standpoint, like how much, uh, how warm the seat is for Sherrington. But if you're Bob Nutting and I hope he sees it this way, because you own the damn team. But if you're Bob Nutting and you can see the excitement that people get for the Pirates winning baseball games, and you can see the potential that you have with this starting pitching, I don't know if he's into it like that. Like I'm, I don't know if he really knows how vi- valuable that is. You're not but, sure if he knows ball? <laughs> I'm not sure that he knows ball. I think he just knows how to buy a team. But... If you can look at that and see how valuable that is, not just from a winning game standpoint, but from a marketing standpoint, from a getting butts into seats standpoint, he should want this team to be good because time and time again, Pittsburgh has shown whenever the baseball team's good, they will show up. If they're not winning games, they don't want to show up. And quite frankly, I can't blame people for feeling look like that. Look at the way that look the way Paul Steen's on his own draws. It could be like that every night. It and once you get to that point, imagine getting back to the postseason and what kind of money mm-hmm. that could bring in. And not only the money that could bring in, but how deep you can make it into the postseason because when it comes to the postseason, offense is good, starting pitching is great. And your starting pitching is great and is built for the postseason. But, man, (laughs) you got to do a lot to change it. And so if if Bob Nutting does not see that, that's very questionable in my eyes. But if Ben Sherrington's seat is not at least somewhat warm this offseason, be like, hey, I see the potential in this team. You need to improve the, the worst areas of it. Like, he needs to add to the bullpen. He needs to sign better bats. Then, I mean, we've been calling it for it for a long time, but Ben B- Bob Nutting should realize that it's time to get somebody else that's more serious about <clears throat> fixing this program because I don't think that there is a good solution with Ben Sherrington, and that's just my personal opinion. I don't think he's cut out for the job. He he has a little fairy tale World Series with the Boston Red Sox, and then has been last place everywhere else he's been, including several years with the Pirates. Why do we have number one overall picks several years in a row? Because Ben Sherrington's GM. I don't think he is cut out to improve the team, but there's definitely his work is cut out for him. I agree. I mean, I've long said that I am not a... uh... I'm not a Ben Sherrington guy. I understand that he won a World Series with the Red Sox, but you look at his total resume, and this is a very different organization that operates very differently than the way that he did in Boston. Just because he was able to win there doesn't mean he knows how to build something from the ground up in the way that Pittsburgh uh, needed to do. Um, So, yeah, I mean, his inability to acquire hitting has really been the thing that jumps out to me. Let me ask you this, and then this will be the last thing uh, before we get out of here is where are you at? So we know, obviously, where you stand with Ben Sherrington. What about Derek Shelton at this point in time? Derek Shelton, to me, is just kind of there. I don't think he is the best solution if you want a manager that is actually going to manage his way into wins. And I don't know if that makes sense, How I'm, what I'm saying. But like, I, I don't think moves, in-game moves, that, that Derek Shelton does – is a lot of the reason why the Pirates are winning some of the games that they do. And I do think that you could probably find someone better suited for in-game management to put you in better situations to win games. And that's what I mean by I don't think he is... He is the, he's not doesn't manage in a way where I feel like the decision he's, he is making 
is the reason that they were winning some of the games. So I think you can find somebody better for that. But at the same time, if this, the Pirates are going to stay with him, I understand it from if you want to play devil's advocate, like like we've mentioned before, like, yes, his team is losing games, but also look at who's on his team with the bullpen. Who's he supposed to throw out there at any given moment? You, you have every single arm in your bullpen is a wild card. So he has no idea what to expect from anybody he throws out there. And with the lineup, I understand that he could construct it better sometimes, but also he doesn't have enough consistent bats to build a overall consistent lineup. And I don't think that that's something that should 100% be his fault all of the time, just because while he manages the, manages the lineup, the team was built by the person above him, not him. So I don't think that he should be the one to get them to the to the postseason, or not that he should be the one to get them to the postseason. I think that someone else would probably be better suited to get them to the postseason than Derek Shelton. I'm I'm more or less neutral on Derek Shelton overall because I see yeah. what he's he's working with, but at the same time, I think the Pirates could do better. That's fair. I I would say that I'm probably pretty close to that, but I if I had to pick one way, I would move on. Um, I admit while saying that though, that you know who knows what he could be with a better group, with a more talented roster. Because I look at this situation, and again, while I don't think he presses a lot of the right buttons, it's hard to press the right buttons when you when most of them are broken. And mm-hmm. you know what what's the old saying? Uh, you know, there's there's no horses in the stable for Derek Shelton right now. Yeah. Uh, so I, I do wonder what he could be as a manager with a better team. At the same time, I just I don't see it. I don't like I, I think that he was a good hire for the time with where the group was at in 2020 from a personality standpoint to be the the manager while they were kind of going through the early stages of that rebuild. But now when you're supposed to be competitive, I don't know. I don't know if it's clear quite yet, but I think it's going to become clear that he's not capable of doing that job. He might yeah. be the guy to start that process, but I don't think he's the one to get you over the hump. I'm laughing because in my head, I'm, I'm. If you worded that differently, he's the manager that you want when your team sucks. <laughs> but and yeah, when, and, I mean, and it's not when your team is fair to him. But yeah, it's not fair to him. But th- that's kind of the reality of it. Is he's the manager that you want when you're rebuilding and your team is bad. But then once you get over that hump a little bit and you get to a point where you want to start to be competitive, that's when you want to move on. Because I agree. With, I don't think he's the type of manager to like kick it into an extra gear and really push this team over the edge. I just don't see that. So if like, like you said, if I have to lean into one camp, mm-hmm. I would lean with moving on from him and trying to find somebody that can find that extra gear for this team and really just overhaul the entire coaching staff, not just the, the manager, like the hitting coach, for example. That's a you can start there. Maybe the pitching coach, because look at how bad the bullpen is. Because as far as pitching coach goes, I think that the starting pitching is doing what they're doing on talent alone. Overall, I don't think the the pitching coach has done anything really to improve this team a lot. Um, But regardless. I mean, I would would be curious as to the work done with Bailey Falter, for sure, and Luis Ortiz. You know, how much of a difference has he made with those two guys in their progress? Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But like I was saying, I think that when push comes to shove, you're going to want to find somebody that can that can get over that hump, so to speak, of being a fringe competitor to actually being a contender for a playoff spot. And I don't think Derek Shelton is that guy. So if I'm picking a camp, I would move on and find somebody else. But overall, my thoughts about Derek Shelton are fairly neutral right now. It's it's almost apathetic where I, I just don't really care about Derek Shelton as manager. I don't lean one way or the other because I know what is also in that bullpen and what's in the clubhouse. Yeah, that's fair.
All right, that's where we'll leave it for now. We'll see uh, what the next week looks like with Pittsburgh Pirates baseball, but you know who knows how much of it I'll be watching personally. Um, we will leave as we always do, telling you about our last sponsor, Everything Custom Designs. I actually do have the tumbler right here with me right now, the around the four one two glass tumbler. This thing's beautiful. I use it all the time, except I for some reason never really have it while we are recording. But there it is on the screen right now. If you guys are watching on YouTube, she also does a lot of t-shirts, uh, long sleeve t-shirts and hoodies for us. Be sure to check that out. We have the link in the description for that directly to our stuff from her on Etsy. She has a Facebook page as well. Be sure to check that out. Get yourself some around the 412 more merch or some customized stuff. This is already August. There's a Steeler game that happens tonight. The cold weather's coming. So grab those hoodies. I don't even have the hoodies yet myself. I have everything besides the hoodies, but I can't wait to start <laughs> rocking those as well. Uh, also, some shorts in the description. DC4L yep. Customs are around the 412 shorts down there as well, of course. We already gave the shout-out, but Game Changers, Pick 6, .LA. Be sure to go check out those sites. Save yourself $10 using code AT412. And then if who, who, of course, could forget, Keith's Barbershop. Our friend at Peak Bar Barbershop, be sure to check them out as well if you are in the area. They've been a sponsor for us since day one. So shout out to Keek and Keek Barbershop. Um, anything else, Tyler? <sighs> no, I'm happy to close out this baseball podcast. I'm happy we actually get to watch football again. Very depressing stuff over the last week for the Pittsburgh Pirates. But yes, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell if you're watching here on YouTube. Hit us in the comments with anything that we talked about over the course of the show, any questions for a future episode, all that good stuff. If you're listening somewhere else, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast from, be sure to leave us a five-star review and subscribe over there. And follow us everywhere at Around the 412, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. Uh, for Tyler, for Smitty, this has been the Around the 412 Pirate Show. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.